Hi again, this is Grandmaster Levan Arushidze and today we are going to speak about mechanical moves or mechanical reactions. So first of all let's uh, explain the topic, what, what is the definition of these uh, mechanical moves. Uh, for example, my opponent captured my piece, my pawn, whatever, and to not stay with the, um, with the material disadvantage, I have to recapture it too. So it, it's quite a natural reaction, right? For example, my opponent create a threat of uh, checkmate, uh, so I have an obvious defense, otherwise I'm gonna lose the game. So yeah, we have to make that move and uh, in a situations when we do not have too much choices, make this natural obvious mechanical move is good and uh, we're logical. So uh, mechanical reactions are helping us to save our energy during the game, to save the time on the clock, so they are helping us a lot. But there is the, the danger connected with these mechanical moves or mechanical reactions mm, because sometimes even it seems like the move is quite good, it's so natural, it's so obvious, uh, but there could be a tactical problem or some kind of trick connected with this very natural good move and it could become a reason of loss of the game. So uh, when we see uh, the obvious good move we should not relax too much and say oh okay it's, it's easy then let me make this move. Every time we are in this type of situation we anyway should we should make sure that this type of mechanical, good, obvious, logical move is really a really good continuation and it's not connected with a tactical blunder or a strategical blunder or whatever. So uh, the, actually the thing that I wanted to advise to you is that uh, doesn't matter what happens at the board, always stay concentrated and once again make sure that the move that you like is really a good. So let's make uh, examples about this topic because uh, blunders and mistakes connected with these mechanical reactions are happening in the highest level and nobody can avoid it. For example, we see the game from the World Championship match between uh, Gary Kasparov and Anatoly Karpov and the last move that was made is uh, Queen G4. So it's, it's clear what White wants to do, he just wants to capture this rook. So uh, let's think what we would play as black. Rook is hanging, so I have to go somewhere with my rook or I have to protect that rook, right? So it looks like that rook c d8 is a really very good continuation and probably is the most natural continuation that could happen in this position because rook is protected, bishop is under the attack and even more bishop is now in the pin because rook d1 is hanging. So it's like a you know, dream situation, rook c d8, the great move. But uh, unfortunately this is the move that uh, is losing the game and Karpov, the world champion, made that move. Uh, the good continuation would be, for example, uh, rook d6, planning to play rook c d8 slightly later, or also um, rook d d8. This could be also a very, very good continuation and black should keep the balance. But, okay, let's check what happened uh, after rook c d8. Well, in a strategical and positional view, it's a really a strong move, but there is a tactical blunder. Uh, I will give you just a few seconds to think about this. You can stop the video and hope you will find it. Okay, let's continue. Kasparov played very powerful queen takes d7. Now, after rook takes d7, rook e8 check, King h7, bishop e4 check, g6, and rook d7. The matter is not that uh, I got pair of rooks for the queen. No, 
I'm winning additionally one more piece because it's impossible to save uh, this bishop or the knight. Because, for example, in order of uh, bishop a6, I'm going just to capture this knight and there is no queen takes bishop because of rook f7 checkmate. So it's too much material for the queen and actually after queen takes d7, Karpov immediately resigned. Uh, let's take a look about the next example. Uh, looks like very simple position w where we could make mechanical mistake. Uh, White were calculating a forced line and um, in, their, in, in his calculation when he arrived to this position he thought that he's winning the game. Well, at the first look it really looks like this because uh, let's say, let's see um, how black could get the queen or King f3, trying to help the pawn, or first e2, right? But uh, both of the, these moves are losing. For example, King f3, Nairthix, and the key is that when the pawn goes to e2, there is a check, and knight has the time to capture the pawn, and then white is winning. Or if black starts with the e2, then white king has enough time just to block the pawn. Now, the only hope from black is um, to play king e5 and try to uh, win this c4 pawn. But uh, after knight c6 check, knight a5, now black just needs to lose too much time for capturing pawn c4. And white is winning in the pawn end game. Well, in, in, white is getting the opposition. King d5. King c7 and king c5, and of course we know how to win this type of endgame. Uh, but surprisingly, uh, the game is possible to win with the black. And instead of playing this this most obvious king um, e3, f3 or pawn e2, the winning move is king g3. Now, what is the trick? I'm not letting white king to stop the pawn. So I'm coming with my king. And the key is that when knight comes to stop the pawn, there is no double. There is no check and capturing the pawn. So it's very easy to miss this type of little detail in a calculation. So white thought that th th he's winning, but surprisingly he's losing now. Uh, well, okay, it, it also happens because we see the direct maneuvers, but king g3 is slightly difficult to find out. Uh, something like similar happened also in the World Championship match between Botvinnik and Bronstein, by the way. Okay, let's see the next example. Um, black is a pawn up, so probably white would be happy to make a draw here, even, even though they have... Um, White has a passed pawn, but black f3 pawn is also very dangerous. So, wh wh what white needs to do in order to achieve the draw? Just, just to capture these two pawns, even exchange for a2 pawn, doesn't matter. And then sacrificing the bishop for the f3 pawn will be enough to make a draw. Uh, well, this was white's thoughts about this position, and he just went to take those pawns. And he thought now black will play b3, uh, take, 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 and draw is coming. But probably white played king c4 too quickly, too relaxed. a3, and suddenly black is winning. Now, what is the point? Um, when we go to stop this pawn, and obviously king c3 is only move, black has this check, the key check, King c2 and knight captures the important pass pawn c7. And now knight comes in time to protect pawn a3. So king b3 is possible, but it doesn't make any do. White cannot progress because every time white goes to capture the knight, pawn will go to the queen. So it's very easy winning now. It's very easy win. f2, bishop takes, king takes, king comes closer and finishes the game. So where is the draw? In truth, white had a very easy way to make a draw here. 
instead of playing king c4, first he should uh, make intermediate move bishop h4, because as we saw, uh, the key move in the losing variation, the way white lost the game, was knight d5 check and capturing the pawn. So first of all, we're going to push away the knight. So knight needs to go to c8, otherwise we will take it and then get the queen. And only now king c4. Now it is very simple draw because white really is going to capture both of black pawns. King c3, f2 is already time to play, bishop sacrifice, king e3, king d4, or a2, and draw. So uh, we see the reason of making uh, these mechanical mistakes are that we, we don't enter enough deep in the ideas of the position. We see that we are a little bit relaxed because it seems like very obvious. But we have to stay with concentration and good attention all the game. Doesn't matter we are losing or we are winning. Now, let's see the next example. Uh, a little bit complicated one, but okay, let's try to understand what happens here. Uh, white has a pass pawn, black also has a pass pawn. Uh, but actually white is closer to this pawn with the king. So for example, if we will block pawn e3, then nobody will catch our pawn h4. Because let's calculate, king is not in the blocking area so far. And even if, if he would enter there, when the pawn arrives to the key square h7, it attacks bishop g8. So black will need to deal with loss of the bishop or just white gets a new queen. So actually black is two moves down to catch the pawn h5 while white can catch pawn a3 immediately. So it looks like very easily winning position for white. And, and what white played in this position? King f3 trying to catch the pawn and then push his h5 pawn. But this is the move, probably the most obvious move, uh, is the continuation that um, loses the opportunity to win the game. Now a little magic happens. Bishop goes to d5 check, king e2, bishop c4 check, king f3, and okay, black can just repeat the moves. After king e2, bishop c4 check, if white tries to avoid additional checks, then what happened? Bishop from g8 came out, because it was a really bad square for the bishop, as we mentioned, from h7 pawn would attack and get the extra tempo. And now, black just plays king e5, and suddenly king is in the blocking area. And it's a draw. So king gives three, the most natural move to stop the pawn is the mistake. Do you see what is the winning move for white? You can stop the video and think a little bit. Okay, I hope you were able to find the solution. And of course it's king g3. Again, it's the similar example as we saw in endgame, knight against the pawn. Actually, knight and pawn against the pawn. So, uh, it doesn't matter the way white will catch pawn e3 by playing king g3, king f2 when pawn arrives to e2 square or just going king f3. Important is to catch the pawn and to not give additional tempo to the opponent for this check uh, to, that, that helps him to come out with the bishop from the age pawn attack. Now it's a draw because if, for example, king e5, h6, king f6, we already mentioned that black king just cannot arrive in time because now we attack the bishop. Or after e2, we catch here black pawn. Black tries to protect it, but h6, and now black king already were not able to stop the passed pawn. So again, it's very easy, very easy to make a mistake and uh, 
to not win or even to lose a game where we, which in which we were working hours to achieve success but just win with one relaxing move one move without concentration we can lose everything so it's very important once again to stay concentrated okay the next example now we will talk about a little bit different kind of mechanical reaction mm, uh, I will explain it what happens pawn c5 went to the c4 obviously it was the last move of the black's player and attacks the bishop so let's try to understand what happens probably if I am the white player uh, I, I try to understand what if I take the pawn and then okay I see ah Blake's idea is to pin my bishop and win the piece so okay I understood his idea and bishop d5 was played in the game probably this is the way white were thinking in this position but after bishop d1 uh, well it's about equality rook c6 bishop f3 rook c7 b5 Bishop b2, rook c2, c3. Uh, of course, c3 pass pawn is very dangerous, but uh, also we must not uh, underestimate um, power of the pair of bishops. So obviously, it's just equality. But where is the mechanical move here? Where is the mechanical mistake? Sometimes, when our opponent makes uh, some tactical trick, tactical strike, and we understand what is his idea, we immediately trust him. Say, ah, okay, I got it. Oh, I have to search something else. But as we can make tactical mistake, tactical blunder, or whatever, it could happen also with the opponent. So we should not trust to our opponents when they try to make some combination. Of course, it doesn't mean that we have to <laughs> go for this combination and lose the game but we have to look at the critical uh, w w w with the critical eye on everything that opponent is making and try to find out maybe there is some uh, some mistake in his calculation so in this c4 move in this tactical trick there is a mistake and in truth if white would think a little bit deeper he would understand how to use it White can take on c4. It's the good move. And after after first look, powerful rook c6. What happens? White may play rook d1. And after rook takes c4, we recover this bishop. Rook takes d4. Rook takes d4. And bishop c3. And now we are winning the well. We are recovering the rook, and we are pawn up in the end game bishop against the knight easily winning end game for white so one one more lesson that we have to study from this video is that we should not trust to the opponent always check maybe there is the mistake in his combination okay let's make another example White is a pawn down, but it's White's turn to play, and we see that we can take pawn a6, we can take pawn f7 with the check, with bishop, with the queen. Uh, okay, the too many good continuations. So, how we should really continue? Let's see. Bishop takes f7, check. Just king h8, and... Um, Queen takes e6 too, right? Now suddenly for a moment white is a pawn up, but black has enough corn play. Let's say key, uh, queen d4, we have to uh, defend against the checkmate here on the first rank, but when we will do this, black knight will capture pawn e4, attack pawn f2, attack pawn c5, so it's about equality. He will recover one more pawn, I will take a6 additional pawn and very little material left at the board so obvious move bishop f7 is not very strong it only leads to the equality okay it looks like queen f7 check is more logical the stronger piece is coming next to the black king but even this move doesn't give too much king h8 
and uh, well th there are problems on the first rank as in the previous line so probably it's it's good to make the prophylaxis like G3 Black also makes the prophylaxis connected with the weakness of the last rank and again I would not say that wow white is winning or they have some something like decisive advantage bishop a6 queen takes e5 bishop b7 uh, okay I will put my rook a little bit ugly on g8 but somehow I'm um, so why winning I'm, I'm holding on and now pawn e4 is hanging so uh, I, I don't say that I cannot say that uh, white is winning here absolutely not so two most obvious moves taking the pawn with the check are bad so it, it's okay, uh, hard to believe it, but it is truth. White is winning by playing queen c7. So we have to show a little bit patience, to not rush, to not hurry, and first attack the rook because suddenly white starting to use the weakness of the last rank. What happens if black will play rook f8 and protect pawn f7? Yes, now of course queen takes f7, rook takes and rook b8 uh, checkmate after knight a8, knight e8 and rook takes e8. So this is the way we have to use the uh, hanging position of the pawn f7 and the weakness of the last rank. After queen c7 move, probably only alternative defense is uh, queen d4. But now white easily disconnects this shaky defensive constructure by playing bishop d5. And the same combination will happen or black is losing uh, at least exchange. So white is winning. Let's check another example. And this happened in the world, uh, no sorry, European Championship, Women Championship two grandmasters are playing and uh, we see that white is a pawn up and knight e5 is under attack so probably white were waiting that um, knight f7 will be played or something like this in his in, in her calculations but suddenly surprising queen h4 happened in the game well Probably white started to calculate here, first of all, what happens after pawn takes e5. And it's obvious that white thought that black is going to take it with a check. It's possible to play f4. Bishop takes f4 check. And now even by uh, giving, up, giving up a little bit material, rook takes f4, queen takes f4 and just king g1 position would remain very unclear because yeah white king is a little bit open but uh, there is a little material left at the board uh, and um, white pieces are in the play so probably white calculating this line and she took on e5 but suddenly capturing on e5 is not forced black makes intermediate check and white immediately resigned because now there is no possibility to play f4 and close this diagonal black just changed the order of the moves now after let's say king g1 bishop e5 there, there's a there's unstoppable checkmate threats here uh, rook e1 for example queen h2 check bishop takes h3 this is end of the game or for example uh, f3, let's say b queen h2 check and checkmate. So once again, capturing is not obligation. We should deal with this and to not calculate variations mechanically. And now I would like to show you one example from my own game and it's it's a little bit funny maybe not too much but sometimes these type of things even even though i'm explaining to my pupils uh making video about this subject but 
in a pressure of the real game sometimes this happening even with me okay it's not a surprise it happens with the world champions so <laughs> i think i should be forgiven uh what happens here i was playing with black i'm a pawn up and what is very important here is that my opponent had only one minute at the clock while i have 20. So it's a little bit uh, dangerous position for the Black King, of course, but uh, nothing bad happens here. So I was thinking, if I have a little time, what I'm doing, what I'm, what I'm trying to do, I'm looking for forced moves, forced lines, forced combinations, for clear plan. I cannot start there playing a positional slow chess. I need very logical moves to keep doing them quickly this is what happens in the blitz when i have a time trouble so when white played queen c3 i immediately realized what is his plan he wants to do knight g3 and then knight f5 when opponent is in a time trouble it's very simple to read what he's thinking about to understand it and for example, if uh, against knight g3, black will play e6, stopping knight f5, then white can go back to the e4, and now he uses the weakness of the f6 square. So as we see, um, black could be in some danger there. But I understood that knight g3 is a bad move in this position because of the tactical reason. And as I uh, really understood that this was his intention, I played some move that um, that is just a useful move and I'm waiting when he will play knight g3. So it's just like setting a trap when you know that opponent is want to is, opponent wants to make some move and you're preparing a trap for it. So I just played rook d5. Well, rook d5 is a useful move. For example, at some point, if, if the danger of a black king would be too serious, we even could exchange the queens. Mm, black is centralizing the rook, so okay, it's acceptable move. And after knight g3, obviously this move was made in the game, I played knight g3 check. This is the tactic that I prepared. And now what happens? The connection between the queen and the knight uh, uh, is destroyed. And after pawn takes, queen takes, now there is the, the white's position is even worse now. It's absolutely lost. Rook f1, rook should be protected. And now black is a two pawns up and Obviously, nothing is left if there is a 30 seconds at the clock of the opponent. But suddenly, here happens unexpected. Uh, when, when I saw this position, I saw the geometrical motivation, the tactical motivation too. Rook takes g3, uh, sorry, b3, queen takes b3, and now rook b8, pinning the king and getting uh, queen and the three pawns for the pair of rooks. Of course, um, the, the, this position after uh, rook b3, queen takes, rook b8, queen takes b8, queen takes b8, king c2, f6, should be easily winning. Black is just pushing his pawns and also combinates it with the checks, with the weakness of g4 pawn, it's easy winning position. So, so I, I I played knight b3, uh, sorry rook takes b3 very quickly, and also I wanted to use the little time that was left on the clock of my opponent. But it's another typical mistake that many players are making in the time trouble of the opponent. Because just imagine, you want to play quickly to not let your opponent to use your time when you are thinking, right? But in truth, what happens? You both start playing blitz. So, in truth, uh, you are losing your advantage. But it's it's illusion that you think that, no, I'm playing quickly and now my opponent doesn't have a time to think. You too. You also don't think. So, this is one typical mistake that happens in the 
in time travel of the opponent and we have to avoid it and always think about this. And another problem is a mechanical mistake here in the calculation because I could not imagine that after rook takes b3 I am sacrificing the whole rook with the check taking the pawn. I could not imagine it's possible to ignore it. And suddenly after king c2 I realized that maybe I could lose even this game because rook is hanging now because rook, rook b8 is not a pin anymore and together with the rook b3 pawn f7 is hanging and black king is in a real trouble where I was a little bit lucky here because after rook b8 black is not losing king f7, queen f7 check, king h8 and if here my opponent could play for example queen e6 attacking this pawn probably black is forced to exchange the queens and now queen takes, pawn takes, rook f6 black will uh, lose one more pawn king g7 first let's make passive black king before we capture this pawn it's a technical detail rook g6 check, king h7, rook takes d6 and now it's obvious that th th this pawn is not enough to win this end game it's a drawish end game. We know that one pawn in a rook end game it's very difficult to make a realization of it. So, well, somehow I was lucky and uh, I was still able to win this game, but this mechan mechanical mistake also, uh, of course, made me a little bit upset. But it happens, as we see, and we have to do our best to um, limit. Uh, the, the damage of the mechanical mistakes. Mechanical moves, mechanical quick reactions are good. As we mentioned in the, bef in the beginning, it helps us to save the time, save the game, but always stay concentrated and check. Is so obvious move is really good continuation. Maybe there is some tactical blunder or something like this. Okay, I hope you will uh, study something new from this video and it will help you to achieve better results in your practical games. Thank you for attention, thank you for listening, see you next time. Bye bye.